In a previous video, we found that the eigenfunctions of the L squared operator involved the associated Legendre functions, PLM, of cosine theta. So I want to talk about some of those properties. Uh, in particular, they're defined in terms of the Legendre polynomials. And remember, the Legendre polynomials are, say, P0 is 1, P1 is x, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, if you were to look at, say, just to, for example, uh, P10 of cosine of theta, what would that look like? So that would be 1 minus cosine squared of theta, everywhere we see x we're putting cosine theta, to the power 0, d by dx to the power 0 of P1 of x, where x is set to be cosine of theta, and then well, that's just p1 of x at x equal to cosine of theta because there's no derivative, there's no first term, so it's just cosine theta. By a similar story, p1 negative 1 would give us 1 minus cosine squared theta to the minus 1 half absolute value, d by dx to the absolute value of minus 1, p1 of x, again evaluated at x equal to cosine of theta at the end of the day here, uh, and so we have to be a little bit careful about absolute values here, but we end up with just sine theta in this case, and so on and so forth. Um, so you can imagine plugging cosine theta in for any set of m and n value to generate these. Let's talk about some of the properties of the PLM of cosine theta, because it turns out some of the properties mirror the properties of angular momentum. Uh, so let's just rewrite PLM of x, the definition that we had from above, again, down here where we can see it. Okay, so first off, let's imagine we take m, or the absolute value of m, greater than l. Remember that the Legendre polynomials are elf order polynomials. Uh, so what that means is p sub l of x goes something like x to the l plus uh, some coefficient times x to the l minus 2 plus etc cetera, etc cetera, going down by power or, uh, numerical values of 2 each time. So that means if you take d by dx of the lth order polynomial when m is greater than l, then the derivative will kill all of the terms in the Legendre polynomial, the lth order polynomial. Uh, which means that um, if absolute value of m is greater than l, then the Legendre special or associated Legendre functions are zero. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, what that tells us then is we must have absolute value of m less than or equal to l, or rather than that uh, m is between minus l and l. And that was a property we already saw of angular momentum. So it's pretty cool that we see it coming out of the associated Legendre functions as well. In addition, we see that l must be an integer. Uh, and that's uh, more just because that this, our uh, associated Legendre functions are defined in terms of Legendre polynomials, and the piece of l only makes sense when l is an integer. Um, you can define Legendre functions, um, but they don't really uh, make sense in the same way for our types of boundary conditions. So that means that there's no such thing as half integer angular momentum. You can't have l equal to 1 half or 3 halves. You can only have 0, 1, 2, and so on. So that's another important property. OK, so let's put all of this together. We found the theta and the phi dependence of our eigenfunctions. And so when we put them together, we call them spherical harmonics. So the ylm of theta and phi that we've been working with are called spherical harmonics. In particular, spherical harmonics, the YLM, are eigenfunctions of the L hat squared and the L hat Z operators, as we've seen. So LZ operating on YLM gives H bar M YLM. And L squared operating on YLM gives H bar squared L L plus 1 operating on YLM. So spherical harmonics are eigenfunctions. And in particular, they have a, a very special functional form that we found. There's a normalization constant, the associated Legendre functions, and a complex exponential e to the i m phi. So again, the PLMs are these associated Legendre functions that we have already looked at. And the ALM, we already mentioned they are some normalization constant. 
And I'm just going to write down that normalization constant without proof. So it turns out it's epsilon. We'll define epsilon in a second. 2L plus 1 times L minus absolute value of M factorial divided by 4 pi L plus the absolute value of M factorial, all square rooted. Yikes. Where epsilon can be one of two things. It's either minus 1 to the M for M greater than or equal to 0, or 1 for M less than or equal to 0. Yikes. Okay, but those are the normalization constants. In practice, we don't use them too much. Uh, what is kind of nice is that the YLM are actually orthogonal. Uh, of course, what do we mean by orthogonal? Well, we mean uh, when you do a particular integral, and what we mean is if you integrate from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, of the complex conjugate of YLM times YL prime M prime, times sine theta d theta d phi. So that should give you 1 or 0. Uh, it'll give you 1 if both the L and L prime and M and M prime are equal, or 0 if any of them are not the same, which is our usual definition of orthogonal. To get a feel for the spherical harmonics, let's just look at some visualization. So here I'm plotting the y uh, 2, 0, so L is equal to 2, M is equal to 0 in Mathematica. Um, and so what we're seeing here, we're seeing the theta dependence, uh, so imagine the z-axis going through here, um, and then rotated around that is the phi dependence, um, and so we can see how the theta and phi dependence um, uh, are important in the spherical harmonics, uh, and the distance from the origin represents essentially how big the function is. Um, so L equals 2 looks kind of funky like this. Let's go to, say, L equal to 1. So L equal to 1 kind of looks like two, uh, two dumbbells or two uh, uh, balls uh, centered from the origin. And so this, so here we see that at theta equal to 0, our function actually goes to 0. That's what that little dot is there. Um, this is for L equal to 1, M equal to 1. And certainly the M equal to negative 1 should be the same, and it looks exactly the same. Um, L equal to 0. Um, it just gives us, we are only allowed to have m equal to 0, and so we just have a sphere for that. Nothing else. Uh, the, our, our spherical harmonic is just constant. Um, as you go up to higher and higher l, of course, you could have more complicated looking uh, theta dependence um, of your function. But uh, and we're not going to go into too much detail of this, just the idea that um, this interesting behavior of the theta dependence in the spherical harmonics is there and can be visualized.